Hi, so the next section that we're going to be working on is a section all to do with angles, using angle properties, angle facts, and we're going to start with this topic called polygons. So what I recommend you do is open up your books, take some notes from what I'm about to write on the board, work through the examples that I'll give you a, a, a chance to work through, um, and if you're not working in your books, then maybe you've got um, a pad of paper or a booklet of paper where you, that you'll have and you can look back over um, and that eventually you can uh, use when doing assessments, tests and homeworks. So, if we call the section polygons, we should really start by asking ourselves what a polygon is. So, we're dealing with shapes. We're dealing with shapes. And a polygon is a shape that is made up of straight lines only. So even a triangle. Okay, a triangle is made up of straight lines. Any shape that you can make up of straight lines is a polygon. They don't have to be the same length. And if they are the same length, that's a special type of polygon that we will meet shortly. Okay, this has five sides, and maybe you're familiar with the fact that a five-sided shape is called a pentagon. Okay, notice it ends in gon, right? It's, a, it's one of the families of polygons. What I'd like you to do is to pause the video right there. If we're saying that a polygon is made up of straight lines, then can you give me an example of a shape that is not a polygon? So maybe pause the video, have a think about that. Um, and then press play, and let's see if you recognise a shape that was not a polygon. Okay, so hopefully you had time to think about that. So polygons, we said, are made up of straight lines. So can we draw a, straight, a, a line that's not a straight line? Well, first thing to think about is, how do I draw something that's not a straight line? Well, it must be curved. Okay, it must be something like this. So what kind of shape has curves that are not a straight line? So hopefully the example that you all thought of was a circle. Okay? A circle is not made up of a straight line. Okay? And although lots of the shapes we deal with are made up of straight lines, right? I could make my own shape, it doesn't have to have a special name, but I can make up a shape like this. Okay? Although that's a straight line, that's a straight line, that's not. Okay? So these are not polygons. Okay? There are many other examples you may have thought of as well. Now when we talk about a polygon, the main ideas that we're going to discuss today is something called interior and exterior angles. That's the next thing you need to write down. So I'm talking about something called an interior angle and something called an exterior angle. So let's draw a polygon. Let's draw a polygon. So here we go. I'm going to draw this polygon over here. It's got five sides. We recognise that that's called a pentagon. Now, let's deal with the interior angle. As the name suggests, an interior angle is an angle that is on the interior of the shape. So this is what we call an interior angle. That's over there. That's an example of an interior angle. Note the interior angles of a polygon are not necessarily the same. Not necessarily the same. They could all be different. But an interior angle is one of these guys. That's an interior angle. That's an interior angle there. That's an interior angle. That's an interior angle. Can you think when they would be the same? Pause the video. Have a think. When would they be the same? Okay, so... Keep the video paused if, uh, if you're still thinking about that. But if you're ready, then let's discuss. An interior angle is over here. We said that sometimes they can be the same. They can all be the same value. And where would they all be the same value? Well, if the angles are all the same inside a polygon, then something else must be true. So to answer this question, let's think what happens in a triangle. We know that the angles in a triangle are... are have to add up to 180 degrees. Now, if they're all the same, the only combination that that could possibly be is when they're all 60 degrees. And what type of triangle is that? That's an equilateral triangle. Okay. 
And what else holds in an equilateral triangle? The angles are the same, but what else is the same? The sides are the same. An equilateral triangle has equal sides and equal angles. Okay, so the sides are all the same. So if you have a polygon where the sides are all the same length, then all the interior angles will be the same. Now, there's a special name for that. So let's just get some notes down. So for a polygon, okay, the write this down, the interior angles are the same if the polygon is regular. Now, when we talk about a regular polygon, a regular polygon has all the sides that are the same. That's the language they will use in the exam. If you are told that a polygon is regular, then you know that the interior angles are all the same. Now, you cannot assume a polygon is regular. You cannot go by a diagram here. It looks just about that maybe the sides are equal, but we don't know. They have to see or give you some lengths or tell you in black and white whether a polygon is regular which means the sides are the same, and by extension the interior angles are the same, or whether it's irregular, which means the interior angles might be different, and also that the sides are different as well. So we've discussed that an interior angle is over there, it's also over there, it's also over there. What's an exterior angle? I want to give you three options of what people generally think an exterior angle is, but only one of them is correct. So I'm going to give you three options, and maybe, if you know, obviously you you'll identify the correct answer, but maybe have a think, maybe have a guess, maybe what you intuitively think an exterior angle should be. So I'm going to zoom in on this corner. Okay, so I'm going to draw this over here. We know that's an interior angle over there. Okay, option number one, let's use a different colour, option number one is this angle here. Exterior sounds like it's on the outside, so maybe that's what it could be. Option number two, is I'll draw a line here, and it's just this bit over here. Or option number three, I'll draw a line outwards like that, and I will take that one over there. So what do we think? Do we think that's the exterior angle? Do we think that's the exterior angle? Or do we think that's the exterior angle? So option number one, option number two, and option number three. So. Have a think, and what do we think? One, two, or three, okay? Okay, so hopefully you've written down what you think. Now, let's rule out the two that is not what we think of an exterior angle, and the op more, most importantly, the, the option that is an exterior angle. So, all of these angles are outside the shape, so it sounds like they could be an exterior angle. This, perhaps is what you intuitively might have thought is the exterior angle, is not the exterior, that's not what we think of as an exterior angle. So that, get that out of your mind, that is not an exterior angle. Number three, that's also not an exterior angle. Number two is the exterior angle. If you got that right, well done. Now, an exterior angle is quite simple, actually, how we think about it. All you have to do is you go to any side on the polygon. In this case, I've got a pentagon. You go to any side, you extend the line further, and then the angle that line makes on the outside of the actual polygon is an exterior angle. So it's over here. Or, for example, extend this line over here, connect it back to the shape, that's an exterior angle. E over here, extend it, Create an angle back, so you're connecting back with the shape that's over there. Okay, that's an exterior angle. It's not the whole angle on the outside, it's just the angle where you extend the side, and it's the angle between that side and travelling back to the shape, as it were. That's an exterior angle. Now, given we've discussed that the exterior angle is there, the interior angle is there, is there a relationship you can think of between an exterior and interior angle? Okay, why don't you just spend a second writing that down? Is there any, are they random? 
could an exterior angle be 30 degrees and an interior angle be 47 degrees? Is there, is there absolutely no connection? Based on my diagram, hopefully you should spot that there's a connection. So, pause the video if you need a little bit more time to think. But what we see, because by definition we said, okay, an exterior angle is when you extend this line. This line here is a straight line. And we know that angles on a, along a straight line have to add up to 180. This, you imagine here, it's as if, as if you're placing a protractor, right? a protractor that has 180 degrees, and it's captured both of those angles. So by definition, and this is the first important formula for this chapter, so make sure you write this down. An interior angle, any individual interior angle, plus an individual exterior angle, must sum up to 180 degrees. Which is great news, because if you have the interior angle, you can therefore get the exterior angle. If you have the exterior angle, you can then go away and get the interior angle. And flipping between the interior and exterior is really, really important for this topic. And it's simple, right? It's just 180 minus... The other one, effectively. Okay, so write that down. Any interior angle plus an exterior angle is 180 degrees. Now that we've established what an interior angle and what an exterior angle is, that's great. We can now use them. And understanding an interior and exterior angle is fundamental for this chapter. So what I would like to do now is show you a very important formula. A formula that you will use pretty much for every single exam question for this section. So, let's have a look at the following. I'll start with a polygon of three sides, most commonly known as a triangle. So let's write this down. So we're having, we're going to create a table. That's, a sh that's the shape. And let's write the number of sides. So that's three. And what I would like to do is to establish the total interior angles in the shape. Now for a triangle, you just know what that is. I know the interior angles in the triangle add up to 180. So we're gonna say total interior angles, which is 180 degrees. Now, something that students are also familiar with is the total angles in a quadrilateral, any quadrilateral. Right? We're not talking about necessarily regular polygons at this stage, any polygons. So when I talk about a four-sided shape, it doesn't have to be a square, it doesn't have to be a rectangle. It could be something like a trapezium or a parallelogram. Okay, any side that has a four-sided shape. Now we're familiar that in a rectangle, the four right angles add up to 360, as the same in a square. But in, in a trapezium, what do these four angles add up to? Okay, perhaps it's not as obvious. It's definitely four sides, but the question is, what's the total interior angle? So let's, let's look at this. What I'm going to do, because I know that any triangle has 180 degrees, I'm going to try and draw as many lines, or as few lines as possible, to, to split the shape into triangles. Once I split into triangles, I know exactly how many angles there are. It's 180. So what we're going to do is let's get rid of these interior angles. There we go. Now, how many lines do I need to draw to split that into triangles? And you should be doing this by now. So copy this down, copy that shape, right? Draw on however many lines you think is needed to split that into as many triangles as is needed. Okay, as few, if effectively, I want as few triangles as possible. Okay, now there's not just one answer. All I need to do is to draw a line from here to here. Look, there's two triangles. I could have also drawn a line from there to there. Now, I don't need to draw any more lines. If I drew another line from there to there, I would also I'd be creating more triangles than, than I want. Okay? We're looking to split this into as few triangles as possible. Now, I know that these angles add up to 180. And that these angles also add up to 180. And if you add up all the angles, well, all of these angles here, these six angles, they correspond to the total, it would give me the total interior angles for the shape, right? That plus that is that interior angle, that, that plus that, that it gives me, the, they're, they're still the interior angles. Now, I know the red angles add up to 180, and I know the blue angles also add up to 180, which means any four-sided shape, the total interior angles add up 
two, three, sixty. Right, let's do the five-sided polygon, a pentagon. Again, not necessarily a regular pentagon, just any pentagon. Okay, so I'll draw this pentagon. Right, over to you. Right, draw this down. Draw in as many lines as you think is necessary. Keep it to as minimum, the minimum amount of lines to split this into triangles. Write how many sides there are and write the total interior angles for a pentagon. And then go ahead and do a hexagon as well. Okay, so I'll give you, I'll give you some time to do that. Pause the video, have a go at that, press play, and then you'll see me do it. So, um, how could we draw lines to create a triangle? The truth is you can't really go wrong. Just choose any point and draw a line to another point. So I'll do this. But that's not enough, because that's a triangle, but that's not, that's a trapezium. So now I'll go back to my point, and I'll just draw it to another point. And there we are. As soon as you've split into triangles, you stop. If I start drawing another line, yes, I'd still get triangles. I'm getting more triangles than I need. I want the lowest amount of triangles as possible. So, you perhaps put it a slightly different way, but either way, you've got three triangles. In each triangle, you've got 180 degrees, like here. Add up the three lots of 180, and you get 540. So we've got for five sides, you've got 540. Now, what about a hexagon? Okay. Similar situation. I can draw a line there, I can draw a line there, and I can draw a line there. I've got one, two, three, four triangles, so I've got six sides, four triangles, four lots of 180 degrees, which again would give me all of the outside angles, just split up into multiple little bits and pieces, okay? And four times 180 is 720. You got that well done? Now, this is all very nice, very entertaining, and it's great drawing these lines, I'm using all these colours, it's fantastic. Except, what if I had a 15-sided shape? It would be very tricky to do. And if I have a 15-sided shape, do I really want to go through all of this process? I'm drawing all these lines, and, and it's sort of fiddly, and I could mess it up. Okay, we're not really here for art. We're here for maths. So, is there a way, is there a pattern that you can see? So, this is very important. Right, as mathematicians, right, before I tell you what the formula is, maybe you can identify it for yourself. Can you find a formula that tells me, if I know the amount of sides, straight away what the total interior angle is. Based on these examples that we've done here, is there a way that we could see that? Pause the video and see if you can do it. I'll just give you one sort of little bit of help. Call the amount of sides n and see if you can come up with a formula that goes from the amount of sides, which is n, where the number that is, to whatever it would be. So for 3, it would be... If n was 3, it would be 180. If n was 4, it would be 360. What if n is like 10 or 20 or 30 or 100? Okay. Can you use this as an example to generalise that for a general result? Okay, press pause. Okay, so hopefully you um, are able to replicate what I'm about to do. What happened here? How did we get these numbers? What did we say? The 360 was two lots of triangles. It was two lots of 180. That's really two times 180. The 540 is 3 lots of 180. The 720 is 4 lots of 180. Every time you do a polygon, even if you had 100 sides, you are adding up a bunch of triangles. So how do I know it's 4 lots? So it's got 6 sides, but yet 4 lots of 180? 5 sides turns into 3 lots of 180. 4 sides, 2 lots of... Wait a sec. I'm always multiplying... Two lower than how many sides? Lots of 180. Look, four sides, two lots of 180. Five sides, three lots of 180. Six sides, four lots of 180. Go back to three. Three, lower it by two is one. One lots of 180. So however many sides you have, all you've got to do is take away two from the amount of sides and multiply it by 180. So that gives us the golden formula for this topic. Okay, which I will write down right now. Okay, so write this down. If you want to know the total interior angles in a polygon, okay, the total interior angles, whether it's regular or irregular, it doesn't matter, you take N, the amount of sides, okay, okay, in maths that sort of crisscross means number, okay, so the number of sides 
take away 2. So reduce it by 2 and you multiply it by 180. Okay, please write that down. Now, a word of warning. This is the total interior. And it tells you every single angle added up in a polygon. It doesn't tell you one angle. It tells you every single angle added up together. So, for example, if I have an 18-sided polygon, okay, if I wanted to know the total angle sum, I'll do 18 minus 2, which is 60, multiplied by 180, which is 2,880. Okay, so it's time to use the formula. So we established that the total interior angles in a shape is 2 less than the amount of sides it has multiplied by 180. So I want you to apply that formula. I want you to use that formula. So we've got a polygon here. Um, and just to make it clear, that's a, you can see that's a right angle. 160 degrees over there. X, that's also X. 120, and that's 80. You're given those angles. And the question is to find X, this angle here, and that angle there. They're the same angle. So... Draw that please, pause the video, have a go, and then I'm going to go through the solution and let's see if you get it right. So press pause please and have a go. So in this kind of uh, problem you can see the angles are different, it's an irregular polygon. But the most important thing is to find interior angles you're going to be using this formula. So let's see, it's based on how many sides there are. Okay? So here it's a quite a big polygon, we have to count how many sides. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six sides. So it's a pentagon. So the total interior angles, there are six sides, so we'll do 6 minus 2, which is 4, times 180, which is 720. That tells me that the total angles are 720, but I want to know those in particular. So let's add up all the angles that we know. So we've got 90 and 160, 120 and 80. So what I'd like you to do, make sure you've written a calculation for adding up just those angles. So you've got 90 plus 160 plus 120 plus 80. So 90 and 160 okay, is 250. Uh, 120 and, and uh, 80 is 200. So 200 plus the 250 okay, is 450. Altogether, I've captured 450 from these two. So 120 and 80 is 200, that's 360, plus the 90 is 450. So that means the remainder must correspond to these two x's. So now what I'll do, I'll go over here, is I'll take the total, which I worked out already, 720, take away the 450, which is 270. But the 270 must be both of those 2x's. So effectively, 2x is equal to 270, which means each one separately is 135. So the answer is 135 degrees. Okay, so let's do this challenging example. Can I ask you to copy this down? I'm going to recite the angles one by one in case, in case they're not clear. This is 85, this is 175, this is 5 multiplied by the brackets of x plus 1, x plus 1. This is 220, this is 20, this is 3 multiplied by the brackets of 95 minus 2x, and this is 130. So I'd like you to copy this down, and your task is to find the value of x. So use the formula that we stated uh, recently earlier on in the video and use that to find the value of x. So I suggest pressing pause, copying this down, having a go and then we will go through it. Okay, so let's go. So we're looking at the interior angles in a polygon and we said that n minus 2 multiplied by 180 gives us the sum of the interior angles. So the first thing we need to do is to establish how many sides this polygon has, which we can do. It's easy. We can just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are seven sides. The formula tells us to subtract two, which is five, multiplied by 180, which gives us 900 degrees. So that means the sum of the interior angles is 900 degrees. Now, 
The next thing to do is to add up all the angles that we actually know, the ones that have a value. So that's the, all of these ones, 175, 85, 130, 220, and 20. And write that down as a method mark. Write that down as a calculation. So I need to see in your working that you're doing 175 plus 85 plus 130 plus 220 plus 20. So let's add that all together. And that gives you 630. Notice there are seven angles since there are seven sides. And we've picked up five of the angles because the remaining two are unknown. They have X in them. So it means that the two remaining angles must be the difference between the grand total, 900, and the ones we added up, which was 630. So the next thing I expect you to write is 900 take away 630, which of course gives us 270. That 270 must be that angle plus that angle added together. So now we have a bit of algebra. We have to set up an equation to describe exactly that, and then we can solve for x. So let's do that now. So we just said that these two angles together must add up to the remainder, the 900 total minus the 630, which is 270. So we have 5 multiplied by the brackets of x plus 1, plus 3 multiplied by 95 minus 2x, equals the 270. And now we have to multiply the brackets. We have 5 multiplied by x, 5 multiplied by 1, so we've got 5x plus 5. We have 3 multiplied by 95, which is 285. We have 3 by, multiplied by the 2x, which is 6x, but be careful, there's a minus there. So that becomes minus 6x. And all of that is equal to 270. Now we need to add the like terms. The only x terms I can see over here, 5x and minus 6x. Be careful with that minus again. 5x minus 6x is just minus x. We then have 5 plus 285, which of course is 290, is equal to 270. Okay, we're getting there. Take the 290 over to the other side. So we get minus x is equal to minus 20, which means that x is 20. And once I know that x value of 20, I could tell you what that angle is, or that angle is, but in this case the question was just to find the value of x. If you got that correct, well done. Okay, so we discussed regular polygons. Okay, regular polygons. Can you remember what I said earlier on in the video about regular polygons? So a regular polygon is where the sides are all the same and the interior angles are all the same. So if you know that a polygon is regular, then essentially you only need to know one interior angle because they're all the same. I don't need to go around labelling all the different angles like I, I showed you in a previous example. So... If you are told this is regular, they would say in the exam question something like, this is a regular pentagon, because it has five sides. So actually, I don't need to label anything here. What I want you to do is pause the video and work out what the value of each of the equal interior angles are. I don't need to label anything. I'm telling you it's a regular pentagon. I want you to use the formula that I stated already. And I want you to tell me what the value of each of the interior angles in a regular pentagon is. So, press pause, have a go, and then I'll go through it. So, whether a polygon is regular or irregular, the formula for the total interior angles is the same. You have n minus 2 multiplied by 180. So it's a pentagon, 
The fact it's regular is not relevant at this point, but it means that the total interior angles in a pentagon, regular or irregular, is 5 minus 2, which is 3, multiplied by 180, which is 540. Now, what usually happens at this point is you subtract the angles that you know, but it's regular, we don't have any. But what else do we know about a regular polygon? We know that all the angles are the same. Because it's a pentagon, it has five sides. If it has five sides, it must have five interior angles. One, two, three, four, five. There are five interior angles. They're all the same, which means I can take the grand total of 540 that I worked out and divide it equally by five. 540 divided by 5 is 108. So therefore, the interior angles are all 108 in every position that I've drawn. You have to be careful, because you're multiplying by 180 by 3, which is 2 less than 5, to get the 540, then you're dividing by 5. Because for the formula, I need n minus 2. But when I divide the total by however many angles there are, you're dividing by the full amount. So that's going to be 108.